This is Gabriel with the Investing News Network. I am here today speaking with FSD Pharma's management team uh, at the Biotech Showcase in San Francisco. I'm speaking with uh, the executive co-chairman, Raza Bakari, and the CEO, Rupert Haynes. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you, uh, Gabriel, uh, for having us here. So we wanted to get started off with uh, the company is very focused on cannabis. However, there are some clinical trials talked about. Um, so can you give us a rundown of what the company is working on? Sure. So uh, FSD Pharma is a uh, is building a largest indoor hydroponic uh, grow facility uh, for uh, medicinal uh, cannabis. Uh, we are outside. Toronto, uh, an hour outside Toronto in Coburg, in a feel-good town. And we certainly are feeling very good about it, uh, that we are creating some jobs. And we are situated in an old craft, uh, cheese craft factory, and we bought that facility in about two years ago, and uh, actually five years ago, in 2013. Uh, but the build-out, uh, our license came in two years ago, and the build-out started and fully developed, we will uh, be the world largest facility uh, covering 3.9 million uh, square feet. Uh, we went public uh, in May of 2018 and raised about $53 million. And uh, through that uh, raise, we made some strategic investments. Uh, specific answer to your question, part of those investments were in a company called SICAN, that is running some clinical trials looking at uh, the role of uh, cannabinoid uh, in uh, the GI tract, particularly uh, irritable bowel uh, syndrome and ulcerative colitis. And I also understand that they have some applications they are looking in the cardiovascular system. So that is a investment that we have done in a company and that company is also uh, eventually in the near future is looking to go public. So our investment thesis is, is making a strategic investment in relevant verticals that also are either are public or are looking to go public. Uh, and that has worked really well for us. As a company, we are debt free. Our facility has a value of over $100 million, I think $105 million, uh, to be precise, uh, a valuation that was done a few weeks ago. And we have over $20 million or so still in the bank. This year, uh, we are projecting to uh, have top-line revenue of north of $20 million, and in 2020, uh, we should have top line revenue, which are north of 75 million. As part of our strategic investment initiatives, we want to also add to our portfolio a platform company uh, that has uh, is is advancing research and development in synthetic cannabinoid space and doing FDA approved uh, trials and bringing certain drugs to market in the future. That is why we are here at JP Morgan, at this, uh, the mecca of biotech arena, uh, meeting uh, with potential targets, and also meeting with uh, uh, certain uh, banks to uh, raise some uh, more funds uh, for that initiative. Thank you. So, um, as you mentioned, financing can be um, kind of an issue for some. However, uh, you did say that your company is debt free. Um, so, what is it looking on the financing front currently? For us, we have been fortunate. Our investors in the first round, uh, when we did our first round, uh, was at 3.8 cents. I think it was $19 million. Uh, our, when we went our first IPO, on the Canadian stock exchange was at nine cents. Uh, our stock today is at 36 cents. So our investors uh, uh, have remarkable returns. Uh, in the fall of last year, when all cannabis related stocks of companies like Canopy, Tilray, they were uh, shooting through the roof, we also uh, did really well. 
Uh, I think our stock was up to 94 cents and our market cap crossed a uh, billion dollars. Uh, but under compression, uh, while other companies, investors uh, are underwater, our uh, investors are still uh, laughing, going laughing to the bank and they are still sending us very happy notes uh, during the holidays. Uh, we got a lot of good Christmas cards and mm-hmm. we're still getting happy New Year cards, uh, even uh, I think delayed mail is coming to us. So we really uh, have good investors. And for us, we have received a good response uh, from institutional investors because our interest now is to do a pipe uh, for our strategic potential investment into a platform company to advance uh, the synthetic cannabinoid uh, uh, research and development of these medications. Thank you. So um, something that always comes up on the biotech and pharma front for cannabis is the purity. Um, now, how can your company kind of attest to this? Purity of the extraction process? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to probably yield to uh, Rupert Haynes, our uh, newly minted CEO, uh, formerly from GW Pharmaceutical, who also uh, has more uh, uh, credentials of uh, a pharmaceutical background, but uh, the extraction process is uh, complicated, but we also have a company, World Extraction, World Class Extraction, which has patent pending, uh, pending some process that we are also using in our own company. We are invested in it, uh, at least the, uh, the founders are. I'm personally also invested in that company, so we do have some uh, differentiated technology that we are using and we believe that our extraction process of the CBD is quite good but I'll probably ask Rupert to probably uh, shed some light on that. Yeah and I am I am the new kid on the block so they're very kindly uh, Dr. Bikari's put his faith in the, the uh, board of uh, FSD and, and, the, and the founding partners um, in me to come on board from GW to help build out the, the pharmaceutical arm of, of FSD Pharma. Um, so I keep saying thank you, but thank you for putting your faith in it. It's a very exciting uh, prospect and um, I kind of have come with a, a heritage of you know, classical pharma, uh, 30 years, but coming down to sort of more specialist pharma and the last four years has been at GW, so I immersed myself in cannabinoid medicine and then over the last two years development, so I know it sort of very well. And that's my sort of um, USP, I guess, which is why I'm here. Uh, to, to answer your question about purity, purity is a very, very big question uh, mark around a lot of the manufacturers and growers around you know, US, Canada, simply because if you're growing it, you have to use pesticides, if you're growing it outside, um, the, the, the cannabis plant is particularly good at sucking up heavy metals and toxins, and that's a big issue. Uh, and, and there's always a question mark of purity from botanical sources. So as Raza said, you know, our, our intention is from a pharmaceutical point of view to use synthetic cannabinoids and not grow it for our pharmaceutical purposes. But from the, uh, the Coburg site that will be providing medical marijuana for um, dispensed use, uh, we have, as we said, working with world-class extraction to minimize the um, toxic uh, content of any of the, the, the produce we have, hydroponically growing it, minimizes it, we can control it in a very good standardized fashion. Leading to pharmaceuticals, as I said, it's going to be uh, synthesized. Let me just add to that, so specifically to your question. Well, Health Canada, number one, it's a regulated, it's an indoor uh, facility, it's hydroponic. Uh, so uh, the standardization process of Health Canada is quite. Uh, uh, par excellence, uh, they do take some time. Uh, they are overloaded. It's a new industry, groundbreaking. Uh, but there is a standardized process. These are GNP standards in which our facility is in place. And I also believe there are competitors, top tier competitors uh, like Canopy and Tillery uh, have similar uh, uh, practices in place. Our grow partner is Oxley. Oxley is a company also publicly traded uh, on the Canadian Stock Exchange, is uh, formed by uh, the uh, original founder of Canopy Growth, Chuck Rafici, and uh, the, design, the, the chief architect. 
So in particular, our expertise that we have is, uh, is state of the art. Uh, also, we use certain lighting, indoor lighting, uh, that we are deploying in our rooms that we also believe is giving us a high yield because our entire process is geared towards developing uh, the yield for medicinal uses. Even that while in Canada, uh, there is a recreational use for cannabis, it is legal, uh, and uh, uh, sale of that uh, would certainly generate revenues. But our company's strategic interest is to uh, focus on the medicinal cannabis uh, space for Canada and be a supplier to 20 other countries uh, in Europe and uh, also there are doors opening up in, in Far East uh, where we are a supplier through channel partners and we are building some relationships. So fully matured, this is a $134 billion market size. So uh, even with as uh, the time passes and this is going to become a commodity play, because we are farmers, indoor growers, uh, farmers usually don't make money. Uh, but nonetheless, if you differentiate as a farmer and, mm -hmm. and focus on the, uh, the medicinal space, where mm -hmm. we want to focus, so we believe that we have a differentiating difference. Uh, but before, uh, the, all good times and all good things come to an end. Before that comes to an end, we want to make this strategic investment, add to our portfolio a platform company that has a portfolio, a, a pipeline of robust applications. So somehow, at one end, we are trying to be a canopy growth 2.0, and we want to cash the dust of GW Pharmaceutical a pathway that they have opened up, but we believe that one is alone, two are 11, and we want to complement and strengthen and broaden the bandwidth of effort uh, that GW has begun the process, and there is room for more to come in play, and I think that there are a lot of diseases, uh, and being a physician by basic training, I have a, enough understanding to be dangerous, but there are many diseases uh, that don't have a cure, but the treatment is limited to use of steroids. And uh, a cannabinoid molecule uh, has a role, a role in uh, particularly in the diseases of the central nervous system, musculoskeletal disorders, uh, uh, disorders of sleep, certain sleep disorders, certain sleep condi uh, skin conditions, and also, there is better treatment options uh, for uh, treatment of opioid addiction, a scourge that is, uh, uh, is common in America and most of the industrialized uh, world. And I, uh, since I come from South Asia, and I believe that uh, opioid addiction is a pandemic. Uh, it, is, it touches every part, every part of the world. Uh, so a cannabinoid-based application that can help treat uh, opioid addiction uh, in a better way. I think so has a lot of application. So while there are many options, but we will start with some very targeted set of conditions. Uh, uh, pick those, uh, hope to find some investors to back us in a phase two A or B trials. So we don't want to be starting preclinical trials, phase one, that is actually, I don't think so today, Investors are that patient, uh, uh, and also we are also entrepreneurs that suffer from attention deficit disorder. So we want to also be rushed in delivering results. Uh, and in nearly 30 years, uh, uh, anything that I have done, I have produced remarkable results and given triple-digit returns on investment uh, on all of those things. And uh, we're hoping not to uh, go wrong this time, uh, especially in a groundbreaking industry. Thank you. Now, there, are there any other final points that you want investors to know about the company? Watch, watch this space for 2019. It's going to be an exciting year. I, yeah, just to uh, pick on that, I think 2019 for Canadian cannabis companies, I think it is going to be an year 
of revenue. Uh, companies that will demonstrate that they have revenue on their top line, uh, those will, because there are many and there will be a, like any new industry, uh, there is a big graveyard. Uh, many uh, uh, fall, uh, uh, many some will implode, there will be landmines, uh, 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 but those companies that would demonstrate and generate top line revenue, uh, they will be the ones that would be, that would lead the charge. And if any can show uh, uh, bottom line, uh, uh, some earnings, I think uh, uh, those will become the messiahs. But I don't think so 2019 is the year uh, for earnings for the cannabis companies, but I think 2019 companies will be judged on the top line uh, revenue producing. And we know that we will have uh, some uh, reasonably good top line revenues in 2019. Thank you. Now, are there any other final points uh, that you want to make? Um, no, I don't think so. You think some good questions about the, the, the purity is a big topic. And I think um, what we're seeing is around that. There's the, uh, the, the, the testing of, of different cannabinoids um, is, is hasn't been as yet refined. I think that will be a key differentiator in the future that the, the consumers have become much more savvy and aware of, you know, differentiating um, different products and brands from one another, uh, which is one of our USPs out of uh, Cobra. Thank you. So thank you both for your time today. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.